Hi everyone and welcome to Morning Coffee Break. I hope everybody's alright today. It's Monday, December 19th. Currently it's 24 degrees. It's starting to get colder. Um, I think it's supposed to be even colder than this uh, for about a week or something like that. It's going to be a big cold spell. And uh, phew, that's not, not any fun. Uh, high today is going to be 43, 10% chance of precipitation, 80% humidity right now, no wind, and air quality 64, that's moderate. It went up a little bit though, it was uh, 20 some I think yesterday. Um, let's see, today there'll be a grocery outlet haul and a, a kitty, kitty did a taste test during the, the, the haul. So check out a kitty's taste test in a grocery outlet haul today. What's for dinner? We had hamburger steak last night, mashed potatoes, and green beans. It was really, really good. And, whoops. I did a short on it if you'd like to check it out. That's what it looked like. Really good. Just a comfort food almost, you know, like meal. Um, tonight, we went yesterday to Kroger's uh, to get, I don't know exactly, there was something we went specifically for. Uh, but we, they had their, um, I guess it's Philly, it's shaved beef. Usually we use the steakums to make uh, Phillies. But we haven't, we love that shaved beef. We haven't had it in a long time. So, and I think it was a dollar off the normal price. Uh, so we'll have like Philly steaks and fries, I think. Uh, you know, we had beef last night with the hamburger steak. So I don't know. I, I uh, don't like to eat beef too many nights in a row. I like to like maybe eat it once a week, uh, up to twice a week, but some days in between. But if that's what they want, we'll see. Uh, well, probably that's what we'll have. They'll be they'll be awesome though. Okay, I got some friend mail. This one's from uh, Sassy T and her husband. He's calling himself Seven Up and Mia. Uh, and I love they uh, they know that I love the. Uh, the truck and this one on it says pine woods tree farm oh uh, yeah I love the truck and it says whether near or far from those you love may this Christmas warm your heart sassy T seven at Mia Mike Joy Logan Miss Kitty thank you so much for being such good friends and all the wonderful videos well you're welcome I appreciate the card very much we do thank you so much it'll go up over here on the freezer I may have to start putting them on the other side there uh, the, the front side is pretty full so yeah I love that y'all check out her channel I, I gave her a shout out the other day on um, the t is it 15 the 15 question Christmas challenge and I uh, tagged her and YC and uh, YC Cooks and Bakes and they both did them so check out their channels go back to them and check out this if you may have already been to them but uh, check out Sassy T and YC Cooks and Bakes for their uh, their videos they did for the Christmas uh, questions challenge so yeah go over and go over and check them out Okay, um, don't have any tidbits today, just wasn't really, you know, anything I, I could use. And I guess I could have, but I didn't think it was very interesting what they had. So, nice news. I need my glasses. Okay, where are we at? 
I get so much uh, junk emails. If I if I didn't get all the junk emails, I wouldn't have near as many, of course. I get tons of them. Okay. Scientists research space hurricanes, swirling storms of lights in the atmosphere. Huh. As a rule, hurricanes, those tropical storms bringing high winds and rain, form over the Atlantic Ocean or the eastern Pacific, often hitting the mid-Atlantic and southeastern regions of the U.S. However, scientists have discovered that similar storms can also take place in space, though they won't be causing any flooding or downed palm trees. Space hurricanes, as they've been dubbed, I never heard of that before, were first presented in a study last year. Researchers found auroras near the North Pole that resembled the structure of a storm with a cyclone shape, a calm center, also called the eye, and rain in the form of electrons, per the Washington Post. A more recent study has shed further light on this phenomenon. The hurricanes are similar to visible auroras pictured above, but occur much higher up in the atmosphere. They can also spin for hours compared to minutes in the case of auroras. There is still more to be done in the way of research, but the scientists are clear that these celestial events don't have the capacity to wreak havoc like a traditional hurricane. Quinn Zing Zhang, who co-authored both studies, said, the study of space hurricanes is just beginning. And okay, this is neat. Inside, I cannot pronounce, I don't think this, Jola Baca Flu, Flud, how Iceland's Christmas book tradition keeps the literary, literary industry thriving. Iceland's history is steeped in literary tradition going all the way back to the period between 1300 and 1800 when the Little Ice Age threatened populations with a barren cold for centuries. During the Middle Ages, people would gather in the evenings to stay warm and one would read to them all as a method of both mental and physical survival per Smithsonian Magazine. Fast forward to 1944 when World War II created a scarcity of goods and people needing something to give as gifts for the holidays. Paper wasn't rationed, so books became an obvious choice, and Joe Bach Flood and the Christmas Book Flood was born. Or the Christmas Book Flood. That's what it's that's what that means. The legend of Jola Baca Flood is a highly is a slightly romanticized and widespread story about how Icelanders give and receive books every Christmas Eve and then spend the entire day reading. While the ritual doesn't really apply to the entire population, there is some truth about the book flood. Publishers purposely was released new titles before the holidays, and the four months around Christmas account for half the country's book sales each year. The Joka Baca flood is essential to keeping the literary industry in Iceland alive, but it is just one piece of an overall culture of storytelling, another uh, I mean, author Balder Barnes no, Nazo told Smithsonian, it's a national pastime, he shared, adding, storytelling is how we process life. And this, I got, I'll do another one today since I didn't have nice news, I mean, today's tidbits. Why bird watching is good for you about the profound mental health benefits of the avian pastime. And I love looking, watching the birds. That's why I got feeders out here. Of course, I can't afford the seed now. It's more than double. <clears throat> Bird watching soared in popularity during the COVID-19 pandemic, and interest in the pastime shows no signs of slowing. If you've been considering joining in, here's a reason to pick up a pair of binoculars. Scientists have discovered that it has numerous proven mental health benefits. And that bird is so pretty right there. In one October study, researchers used a smartphone app to examine the impact of seeing or hearing birds on self-reported mental well-being for real-life context. They found that encountering birds was associated with improved mental well-being for people with and without depression diagnosis. This further confirmed a growing body of evidence that listening to birds can reduce 
anxiety and benefit those with depression, but why the fascination with avian wildlife? The Cornell Lab at Ornithology, Tina Phillips told Time, there's a lot about birds in terms of their charisma, their behavior, and their accessibility that makes them this perfect group of animals that people can really relate to and resonate with. John Strassman, author of the book Slow Burning, agrees. The mental health benefits are profound, she told the outlet. Sitting outside and listening to the birds and getting to know their songs is really calming. And to me, there's the special thing about birds is that they can leave. They don't have to be there. But they have chosen to be there where you are, and at some point they'll move on. Wow. Okay, let's see what. Quote of the day comes from Audrey Hepburn. The best thing to hold on to in life is each other. Amen. All right, everybody, that's going to be it today for morning coffee break. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I hope you'll press that like button. Also, subscribe if you haven't already and share this out. And hit that so you get all my videos as soon as they come out. Everybody, I hope you have a great day. Definitely check out the grocery outlet haul and Kitty's Taste Test. Uh, she did a good job on her segment. So, thanks for watching, everybody, and have a great day. And God bless.